Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in today's session, we are going to talk about how we can create custom connectors under Power Automate. So at times, uh, you may require to create custom connectors where possibly you may want to connect to some API or some data in your on-premise data center. And as well as uh, sometimes you need to create the custom connectors to connect some APIs which are outside, uh, which for which we don't have any connectors as of now. For example, uh, you're a finance company and you want to fetch the stocks data from Morningstar. So let's say you have your subscription added with Morningstar as an organization and you want to uh, fetch the stock data from Morningstar only, like not the whatever connector that Microsoft is giving. So for that scenario, we have to create the custom connectors. So in this session, we are going to take a look at step by step process how we can create custom connectors. So I am in under my Power Automate uh, screen. So if you go to the connectors on the left of navigation, so you would see all the connectors which are available over here. And if you would like to click the custom connector, then you have to go to open this data and under custom connector, you have to click on this. So this is, this will give you a area where you will, you can see all your connectors created. So for demo purpose, I'll be actually using this weatherapi.com and which gives me the weather data related to any of the city. So I'll be just passing the city as an uh, parameter to the request query and I'll get the data or the weather report for that uh, specific city. And the authentication we are going to use is this key authentication. So we are going to use this API key. So this is just for demo purpose, I because I could not connect to on my on premise data of my company and can't have that on my test environment. That's why I'm skipping that part. But this the same steps would be followed if you would like to connect to your on premise any APIs or data. So I'll be keep uh, telling you like what you have to do like to make a connection to your on premise data center. So let's just get started. So I am over here. I am clicking on this create from blank. And under this, I can just give a, my this uh, connector a name. So I'll just say weather connector. Continue. And on this general screen, so you can just upload your icon image or like you can set up your background uh, color as well. So I'm just skipping for the demo purpose. I'm just saying there's a, there's a weather connector to fetch other data and now if let's say let's say if uh, your company has already created uh, some api uh, let's say this connector is for fetching sales report and uh, there is a uh, some different team which have created some apis within your data which resides within your data center so then you have to click this on on connect via on premise gateway and in later, later steps, when you are going to create the definition, it will ask for the connection, how you would look, like to create or make a connection to your on-premise data gateway. So you have to choose the selector. And in my past videos, I have uh, already told you like how you can install the on-premise data, data gateway. It's a straightforward process. You can just download the on-premise data gateway exe from Microsoft site and have that install any of your Windows server which should meet the few requirements of a .NET uh, version. And if you have those requirements in place, then it just click, click, click next and everything would be set up. So it's on-premise data gateway process setting up like it's, it's pretty straightforward. And for our demo, we are not going to use this on-premise API. So we am just like using this public API. So I'll just skip this, uncheck this connect way part. And I'll be using the HTTPS schema and if, for example, if you're on-premise uh, gateway, if you have your APIs uh, working on HTTP, not HTTPS, then you can just, you have to select this HTTP. So I'm just checking this HTTPS for us. Now I have to provide the host name. So I, as I said, I will be using this API and the URL would be constructed in this fashion. For example, apiweather.com, the current JSON and the key, this would be the key. So we are going to use the key authentication. So at that time, we are going to pass this key and in Q query is London. So this query is a parameter. So I'm just like copying the host name from here. 
and putting the host name over here. So next step is to provide the security. I mean like authentication type for your this connector. So as I said, we are going to use this key, API key authenticator for this. And you have to pass on the parameter. If you read out, like user will be required to provide the API key when while creating a connection. So I'll be just saying key and parameter name would be key as well. And instead of like passing that parameter location as header, I'll be choosing query. And the reason is because I am just passing my query, uh, this key under the query. So if your connector, if your this API connection uh, wants to provide that key under the header part, then you have to like choose that parameter location as header. So right now it's just query and just choosing that. And if I go to definition now, here comes like where we actually provide the actual action and the endpoints. So on this screen, we have to create a new action and under this summary, so this action would be displayed in your MS flow, like while you have, you would like choose this action. So I can just say, uh, summary is like get weather data and in description, you can just provide get weather data based on city and or location. So this is just normal description. And under this unique operation here, you have to provide like what action name would be there. So it's a get weathered by city, let's see. So I'll just choose this one. And under the visibility, you can just have none like for default. So you can just skip that part. And after this request, uh, we have to like create this request parameter. So I'll just choose import from sample. And under sample, I'll be using verb get because it's just a get command. I'm just getting it. And I'll just put up this entire URL under my this URL. So you can see that key part, you can just remove this key part because we are providing that key part as uh, this uh, parameter API key parameter, which is, which is under a security part and the authentication. So we can just skip this. So now this Q London would be just the parameter. And if you would like to pass that as a parameter under action, you have to use the curly braces. So you can just simply now can do import. And once you import, you can see this URL is this one and path because we don't have any forward slashes like going forward for this path. So that's why it's blank and under query, we have this query. So let's say like uh, your query contains path. For example, if I just go to notepad, for example, your query just takes uh, 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 like city name as in path. So, so for this, you have to like choose, you have to like uh, go to your import from sample and at that uh, URL, you have to like use uh, in this fashion. So I'm just telling you so that if uh, your query does contain a parameter as path, in that case, like what you have to do, you have to like do this uh, queue. So if you click on this, it will just add up uh, this path. So now we have that parameter as path. So that's how you can do it. Just like for your information, I'm delete, deleting it and then just creating importing from sample again so that we can have the right query in place. Copying this entire, removing this authentication part from URL. Now we have this. Okay. So now I'll just uh, going to save my connector. So in next step, if I just go to code preview, uh, it code review, like it, it will say that uh, what actual script bit base it has created. You can disable this as well and can start can if you have multiple actions, then you can choose up your actions to look at this code, uh, uh, what, what code has been created for that specific task. And as well as like if you have custom connector created by C sharp, then you can just upload your C sharp file over here and it will read up the script basis from there. 
So right now we are not going into that uh, C-sharp coding stuff that is for complex connectors. So I'll just skip that part for now. So in next step, we can test it, but it's saying you must create the connector before testing. So I'll just click on create connector. So it's saved now. So now we can test and before test, we have to create that new connection. So I said uh, while creating this in the general tab that uh, if you are checking that connect to on-premise gateway, then over here, it will be asking to you pick your gateway name, uh, which is already installed. So right now we are not using any gateway. It's a public API. So I'm just clicking on new connection. It opens up a new tab. Now over here, I have to provide my this subscription key or this normal API key. So I'm just copying and going under this and create connection. So now because it's disabled, we have to refresh it so that it can start showing me my weather connector. So it's there. Now for test operation, I can just pass on the city name and just click on test operation. So let's see if it gives us result. Okay, so we got status as 200. That means success. And we got this entire JSON as an body. So we are, we have successfully created this connector. We are ready to go to use it in the Microsoft Flow. So I'm just closing it. It's saying this connector has been created. So I'll just go to my flows and we'll create one instant cloud flow. I'll choose the trigger as manual because, because I would like to just test it. So in the new step, so as uh, you know, like I have created my action with feather or uh, get weather. So it's still, it's not available. So I'll just uh, refresh. So it takes a while. Okay, so when I start typing as weather, it has started giving me this weather connector. So sometimes it happens like you have to update your connector once again, like after doing the test operation because it actually saved that connection part as well. So if once you do the update connector, then it should start appearing over here when you type in or it can, if you click on this custom, it will show you up your custom connector. So it has, it does has this custom action get weather data. And as you see, like it's asking for parameter, so you can just put in parameter. And I, and when I enter this London city, so probably you can just pick that up from any of the different uh, trigger, for example, SharePoint list item, and you can just do that dynamic operation. And when, when you save it and uh, run it, it's manual trigger right now, so I'm just running from here itself. So it should run. Let's see, it ran successfully. And under our output, we can see we got this data name is London, which we have passed as parameter. This entire everything is over here. Like condition is partly cloudy. You can just pick out the wind, pressure, humidity and everything like you got your weather report like for that specific city. So that's how you can create your custom connectors. And once the data is available, you may use parse JSON or compose actions to filter out the data, whatever you want to do. So this was end to end process for any on premise data. APIs data uh, data APIs you can use the same way you have to just use the connectors on premise gateway that's it every entire process is same so I hope uh, while working with the uh, internal APIs or public APIs as well with the connectors which are not there not provided by Microsoft you can create your own custom connector so if you like this video as useful please drop your comments to like and subscribe my channel.